you've played more than once. Number two, you had that other game you were in. Yeah. And <laughs> that other game you were in. This is the 29th time I've played D&D, guys. Bardic! Mystery! Tour! They're only friends! They're solving crimes! They're traveling in a party! They're writing songs we don't have time to! Come on, let's get started! Bardic Mystery Tour is a 5th edition D&D actual play about a rock and roll band who solves mysteries while they're out on tour. I'm Ed, and I'll be your DM. I'm Emily. I'm playing Flo Calhoun. If you don't know who that is, she's a wood elf and a bard. She's the lead singer of the band Antler Mayhem. She plays the cello. She generally tries to help people, and she's wearing an antler crown and bracers of archery. Hi, I'm Brayton. I'm playing Sammy Stoneslinger. Sammy Stoneslinger is a gnomish bard who plays the drums in the band Antler Mayhem. And I just read on my character sheet, that I have a novelty straight jacket that I don't remember where I got it from. Sammy is the best part of the bunch, and that's the, all I have to say about that. Hi, I'm Grumbledor. I'm feeling old as shit after we uh, we did bad in the quiz show. You don't think your novelty straight jacket came from the West gift the shop asylum? at the asylum where they sold novelty straight jackets? That makes sense. I circled it. I don't know. Do you sleep in it now? Does it have uh, much armor rating? Uh, no. Does it have any no. armor Cloth rating? Cloth have. It's a novelty. If it was a real straight jacket, it might have armor rating. I would think a straight jacket would like just give you a status effect. Yeah, restrain. Like you can't attack. Yeah, can you use it to restrain someone yeah. else? Can this one be used for restraining, or is it can't because it's novelty? Uh, it can, but it's got a way lower challenge rating to uh, escape from. Okay. But maybe if we put that on somebody and tie them up, it's like extra. Yeah, like the CR might be like, or I mean, them. the DR. Then tie I mean them the up. It's easiest to tie somebody MR. up if you kill them first. What would MR possibly be? It might be heavy. Multi rating. Is it just challenge rating? Movement rating. The CR is probably like nine to get out of this bad boy. Yeah. Oh, happy birthday to my childhood friend, Derek. It's his birthday today. I haven't yeah. seen him in years. Happy birthday. Happy is birthday, it Pi Day? Eric. No, it's the first. Is it Mole Day? It's 3.1, no, not 3.14. I thought Pi was 3.12. No. 3.14159265358979. memory nine. space on those numbers? It's not a zero-sum game memory. You can remember as many things as you remember. At the price of not remembering more important things. I don't think that's how that works. I think it is. Happy birthday to my childhood friend, Grundledore. Oh, thank you. I don't know how old I am anymore, but I know how old I feel. Aren't you like 48? I'm, I feel older 38? No, Grundledore. I don't even know how much I aged in that game. 20 years. 20 years. Doesn't it say it on your character sheet? No. You should write it on your character sheet. I have no age on my character sheet. Now you're young again. Nope. I'm ageless. Then it's perfect. You can't feel that age creeping in, taking over. If you say timeless, it's a little more classy. I'm not classy, though. But you were ages ago. Was I shitting myself in my fine clothes? At one point, being a those fine look. clothes had no shit in them. Oh, you can cast press the digitation to clean them. Oh, that's just the illusion of being clean. Though. No, no, it actually cleans actually them. cleans oh, them. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. You can cast minor illusion to make it look. Should have learned that a long time ago. I'm gonna cast prestidigitation on Grendeldor's clothes to clean them a little bit. I assume we have to cast it a bunch of times to get them fully clean. Magic spark, extinguish flame, cleaning through prestidigitation, warm coffee, acceleration, magic spark, prestidigitation. If you want to clean my underwear, you got to cast it just on those. You might need mending to clean your underwear. You might need, like, a rebuke evil to clean your underwear. You cast a spell before we even started? Yeah, we didn't start. Okay, I won't cast it. Then no, I'll rub blood on my it. maul before we even start. You rub cheese. What did you rub maul? You rubbed oil on your maul? Blood. Blood, blood on my ball. <laughs> 
Oh. <laughs> rub blood on my balls. <laughs> rub blood on my balls. To make it easier to shave them. It's fine. So. While you guys are sitting around the lounge area of Taverna, the haunted inn, mending each other's underwear and bleeding on your weapons and organs. Bleeding on my own organs? I mean internal bleeding? No, your sexual organs. So Antler Mayhem is sitting around the lobby of Taverna, shooting the shit, passing the time, and then the door opens, and Dirk, your longtime friend and band manager, comes in the front of Taverna. He waves at the lurchy front coat dude and walks over to the gang, and he says, I don't know, guys. It's getting harder to find shows in Grand Argetza. Huge city. City. And I don't know what we're going to do. Did you are, you are you saying you couldn't find us a place to play? You couldn't book us? Yeah, all the venues look like they're trying not to book us criminals. I think we leave town. This How about is we the just worst kind of busk. discrimination. We can just busk. Let's just play on the street. Yeah, it's not a crime to play on the street. It is it's only a us. crime to be a criminal. <laughs> it's not a crime to be you. You just have a record with the government. So I guess first things first, how easy is it for us to just leave Grand Argetza, huge, huge city. city, and find a new place to play tonight um, or the next day? It'll probably be difficult to find a new place. I booked all this time on this tour in Grand Argetza because I thought this was when we were going to really hit it big. And I thought that these couple shows are really going to, you know, steal the deal, get this record deal we're looking for. But uh, really, this whole trip's kind of been a bust. We've been on the run from the law the whole time. It's been really difficult on the PR side. Now, they do say there's no such thing as bad PR. Wait. There's a good point there. Or do press. You, maybe maybe I that? just need to make a sex maybe tape. Maybe press. It worked for Paris Hilton. It worked for Kim Kardashian. It could work for Grown Thor. It worked for Trent Reznor. Yeah, Trent Reznor did that. Is that true? I don't know. Rob Lowe. Who's that? Dude, you don't know who Rob Lowe is? Wait, the Dirty Jobs guy? Yeah, that's it. Um, So you don't think, like, if we just bail on this city, we're not going to be playing shows anyway for the next couple of weeks. Yeah, we might have to just start over, kind of, I guess, which is problematic for us. We had a good streak going here in Grand Argetza. I think that we had a pretty you, good following city. I mean, we had a pretty good following. How do we not be criminals? I think it to break fewer laws. That's what I mean. But that's what I was thinking. We, All we like, have to do is clear our names. How right. do, yeah, that's what I. And mean. then we can play the biggest venues in town. So what if we haunt down Lady Via? You say haunt down her. You haunt her down or hunt her? I said hunt. Uh, The first thing we should do is find out a list of all the charges that are brought against us so that we can check them off one at a time. That's a good point. Were there any of those signs that say wanted and then it says our names or antler mayhem and pictures of us in town that we've noticed that we could like see? And if so, maybe they have detailed descriptions of what we're wanted for. And once we clear our names, all those signs are already up and we just have to go add on to them a date and time. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then it becomes like a Bon Jovi song. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great idea. I can go find one on one of the, you know, town bulletin boards or whatever they call. Do they say we want it dead or alive? Go find out. I don't spend a lot of time looking at them. I mean, are they going to try to kill me if they see me? They won't recognize me old now. Well, yeah, that's true. Okay, cool. We'll wait here if you want to go. All right, I'll be right back. And he leaves. What do you guys want to do now that we ditched Dirk? Oh, I don't feel like we ditched him. He's doing something important because we need to play this show. Yeah, we didn't ditch him yet, but if we leave, we go somewhere now, we can still <laughs> ditch him. Oh, I don't know. I don't really want to ditch him. I think we should wait for him. I want to see these signs. Let's just chill at the breakfast buffet until Dirk gets back. Yeah. Do they have mimosas? Maybe at the bar. I'm going to go up and get a mimosa. Oh, okay. You go up the stairs to the balcony. At the bar is your good friend Noga, the demon. Hey, Noga. Oh, hey, Flo. How's it going? It's all right. How about you? I'm doing pretty good. You want a mimosa? I do. Did you read my mind? No, but it's early morning. And what else do people drink in the morning? Bloody Marys? Yeah, I don't really want that. I'll take a mimosa. Sweet. He makes you a mimosa. Then you hear... 
Oh, hey, Flo. And you look over and sitting on the bar is Gormax, the Warhammer. Hey, Gormax. How did you get here? Oh, Bardley left me here when he left. That's weird. Yeah. All right. He just left you here, like at the bar? Yeah, I said uh, that I was going to hang out with Sammy. Oh. Do I you figured you guys are coming back here. Sammy? Uh, sure. All right. Uh, can I lift him? Is he too heavy for me? No. This isn't me, old R. <laughs> yeah, right? Okay, so I pick up Gormax and take him down the stairs with my mimosa. Mimosa in one hand, Gormax the Warhammer in the other. He's like, unless you want to hang out, Flo, I don't need that. Nah, I mean, I'm not proficient with anything heavy or swingy. Mostly just like, you know, a longbow and a longsword. So. Distant stabbing. Yeah. Pretty much just all distance everything. My favorite kind of stabbing. Hey, Sammy. Yo. Found you some Gormax. Been missing you. Oh, yeah. Here Thanks. Hey, Sammy. Hey, hey, Gormax. Let's go cause some mayhem. Yeah. We gotta wait for Dirk, though. All right. And then the door to Taverna opens once again, but in walks someone who is not, in fact, Dirk. Ba-da-da. But is actually like a... He's a human who is like five foot tall, but he's wearing uh, really fine clothes. He's well dressed, but he's also ready for travel. He walks past the coat man and disregards him and walks up to the front desk where all eight is standing. And he says, excuse me, ma'am, I'm looking for Antler Mayhem. And I heard that they're staying here. And she goes, no, uh, they're not staying here. Uh, While his back is turned, I take my antler crown off. He's like, well, that's a shame. I was hoping I could find them because... I was going to offer them a chance to play at my venue I just recently purchased. I put my antler crown back on and I run down the stairs to him. I thought you were already down the stairs. You took Gormax down and gave him to Sammy. Oh, yeah, I have Pitt's picturing myself on the stairs. You can still be on the stairs. I run down the stairs to him. I say, hello, sir. He goes, oh, hello, ma'am. Uh, I am the lead singer of Antler Mayhem. Oh, really? Yes, indeed. You just happen to be at Taverna. Yes, indeed. I, uh, I really like this bartender. Noga? Sweet. We're not staying here, but I do like to stop in here from time to time. Oh, well, I have a proposition for Antler Mayhem. And then Sammy comes over with a plate of eggs and sausages and and bumps into Flo nonchalantly and is like, Oh, excuse me. Oh, Flo! Uh, Fancy seeing you here where we're not staying at a hotel. Were you just taking breakfast from here? Did you pay for that? Oh, I have a deal with the cook. I really like the cook here. Oh, all right. So, uh, this guy here, what's your name, man? My name is Nathaniel. Nathaniel was telling me, uh, well, about to tell me about this, uh, proposition he has. Well, you see, here's my story. I recently acquired a venue named The Red Wagon. I'm looking to book shows. And I heard that you guys might be in dire need of a venue. Why? Who told you? Well, let's just say I got my ear on the street and someone is going around all the venues and getting rejected trying to book a show. Sammy, I look this guy up and down. He's got both his ears on his head. He's lying to us. Y- yep. Uh, that, he, that, that's what I say about people with two ears, too. I don't think I think it might be a figure. Go continue, sir. <laughs> so I figured since I'm looking for some clients and you guys are looking for somewhere to play. We can maybe make this work. But seeing as how I'm sticking my neck out for you guys, maybe you could do me a little favor first. What kind of favor? Well, you see, it's a little awkward. It's not the kind of favor you would expect from a rock and roll band. You want us to break up with your girlfriend for you? Or a pack of criminals. You want us to break up with a pack of criminals for you? Are you calling us a pack of criminals? You are wanted by the law. I low five flow on the sly. Well, you see, I'm heading out of town, and I had a babysitter set up for my daughter, but the babysitter never showed, so I need someone to take care of my daughter. But my daughter is extremely into mysteries, which is why I previously hired Nancy Druid, the local sleuth for the town. Oh, yeah, we're a big fan of her work. And she's nowhere to be found. Wait, Nancy Druid or your daughter? Nancy Druid's nowhere to find. Nowhere to find. 
So you want us to find Nancy Druid or you want us to babysit your daughter? I want you to hang out with my daughter and make her feel like you guys are solving a mystery. How are we going to do that if we are wanted by the law? Well, number one, keep your heads down. Number two, stay in my house. How are we supposed to believe you? You have two ears. Cut off one of your ears and maybe we'll consider your deal. I had a close friend once say people with two ears on their heads can't be trusted. We see I come from money, so I can make it worth your while. Well, you can afford to put the ear back on when you take it off then. Uh, I'm not going to be cutting my ear off. Okay. Where is your daughter right now? Well, in our house. How far away is it? I mean, it's in Grand Argetta. Huge Huge city. city. Does she have two ears? She also has two ears. On her head. Yeah. The sides. That doesn't seem that bad to me. Uh, ask Flo. She's the one. I mean, the thing is that he said that he has, has his ear on the ground is what is what I was having a hard time oh, with. And they're clearly right here, not on the ground. Oh, see, I misunderstood this whole time. I'm sorry, Grand I thought if you had two ears, you're a liar. And I have two ears, <laughs> but I know I am. And I, he has two ears, and maybe he's just like me. And I'd try to pull one over on us if I could. So your daughter's not far from here, and you want us to watch her for how long? Just the the day I'm going on a a day trip, and then we could do a show tonight. Well, who's watching her right now if you don't have a babysitter? Uh, She's by herself right now, which is dangerous. All right. uh, We got to talk real quick, and then we huddle up. I don't don't trust him. I think we should do it, (laughs) because if we don't like his daughter, and Dirk comes back and says he can get our name cleared, we'll just bail. No harm, no foul. Can he bring his daughter here, or do we have to go to her? I think he wants us to go to her. But Dirk's not going to know where to find us. Yeah, we'll wait for Dirk. She's already by herself. You know what I mean? He's the negligent parent at this point. Look, she's with, like, the maid, but the maid has work to do, so she can't babysit all day, because she's not a babysitter. She's a maid. Was that Gormax, or was that the dude? That was the narrator. Okay, because I was about to be like, butt out of our huddle. Maybe you don't understand how this works. All right, plus, if we take the job... I don't know. We should just clear our names. Let's just go take the job. Let's check it out. Because maybe we can clear our names with this girl if she's super into solving mysteries. I guess. How old is your daughter, Nathaniel? Eight. What is her name? Zeta. With an X. Like Z-E-D-X-A? Is there an H on the end? No. We spell everything normal in my family. Like Nathaniel. Does Nathaniel start with an N? No, it starts with a D apostrophe. Uh, Okay. All right. And their mayhem's on the case. What's the pay, by the way? 2,000 gold. Holy macaronis. For one day, yeah. How are you going to pass that up, Brian? All right, we'll take it. Right, can you give us directions to your house? Yeah, he gives you directions to his house. Through under Getza or through over Getza? Through over Getza. It's going to be fine. That's the sky burrow. Oh, yeah, we should take the flying carpet. It won't It won't attract anyone, as we learned. Let's tell Olaid where we went to so Dirk can come find us. Yeah. Smart. All right. She's like, yeah, I'll let him know when he comes back. Okay. Off we go on another grand adventure. You arrive at the estate of Nathaniel. I knock on the door. It's a very large house with a very large green area around it for plants and things. It has one of those, like, when you pull in, you can, like, loop around and leave instead of, like, turn around. Yeah, with like a fountain in it. It was a fountain? What kind? What does it look like? It's a hippogriff statue. For the listeners. It's not an actual hippogriff. <laughs> All of our listeners know what a hippogriff is. But in case they don't, not for me. I know. Ed, would you describe it for the listeners? Yeah, a hippogriff is like a, the front half is a bird and the back half is a horse. Yeah. It's like a griffin, but with a horse instead of a lion. So not part hippo. No hippo. No. Listeners. Did J.K. Rowling coin that one? No, but she did use one. Uh, Is it from mythology? Yes. Okay, Who who's the idiot that wrote that shit? Who wrote J.K. Rowling? Hippo. Who put that? Who, it means who, who's horse. Who's the genius? Hippo, hippo does not horse. mean horse. Yeah, that's why a hippopotamus is a water, is horse. water horse. What? They're not like horses at all. Well, I mean, the fact that they have really fucked up teeth... That is just like a horse. And if you give them peanut butter, they can talk. I think horses have, like, human teeth. 
No, they have like teeth in the front and and it's just like the very front and there's this big long gap and then there's like a couple of molars in the back. Oh, that's all I got. Yeah. Hippopotamuses have human teeth in their droppings. That's because they, they don't eat people. eat people. They don't. They're they're vegetarians. They just trample them. They trample them. Oh, for real? Yeah. I thought they, they eat people for they sure. They eat boats on the Amazon or something. They're the most dangerous animal in Africa. I just did I don't trivia think last night. I think they're most dangerous in the world. I said the Amazon, but I don't think there's like a single. There's no Amazon in, in South America. No. <laughs> Maybe in a zoo, but there there might I don't be a even... single one. I don't know. Not but like do. free and I hope in the, the kids wild. out there are learning. They lots might be from this taking. Episode. They might be dating someone. I bet just someone released a hippo in South America at some point, and it's just like out there trying to find another hippo. Bardic Mystery Tour does not endorse capturing hippos in Africa and transporting them to South America and letting them free. But if you do, video it and send it to us. Just post it on YouTube and send us the link. Don't send us the whole file. That's too much. That's ridiculous. But they are herbivores. Fact. They don't eat okay. people. They can hurt you. They just F them Because up. they're huge and they're, you know. Territorial. Full of rage and they want to protect their babies. And they make the best sound. So there's not one of those in the fountain. It's just a hippogriff. It's not a hippocampus. Can you drain your hippocampus? Is a hippocampus a thing you have? It's in your brain. It's like a part of your brain. I thought it was another D&D monster. I mean, you could make it one. It's probably got to be something like that brain with legs. The hippogrimpus. All right, let's go to the door. And as you approach the door, it opens, and there is a lady there dressed like a maid. She says, hello, are you guys Antler Mayhem? Who wants to know? I'm the maid. I don't have a name. You're a maid woman? Is that like a joke about something? About the mob? I don't get it. Like a maid man? I don't get it. I thought a made man was like a wealthy person. They're like a member of the mob. I thought a made man was just someone who made their own fortune and wealth. I thought a made man was, was like a self-made man. A man that cleaned houses and wore a black dress with a white apron. That's spelled differently. Yes, we're Antler Mayhem. Good, because I can't wait to get back to my job and stop hanging out with eight-year-olds because they're really annoying. Wait, Plural? We did not sign up for plural. We signed up for singular, eight-year-old. Uh, or plural in the sense that it's zero. Is zero plural? Yeah. There are no toes on that foot. There are no ears on that head. You use the plural form for zero. Weird. Unless you say, like, there ain't no toe on that foot. Then you use the singular. Fair enough. So, like I was asking earlier, though... One eight-year-old or more than one eight-year-old? Just one eight-year-old, but she's a handful. Okay. Especially if you hate kids. Where is she? She goes, Zeta, come here. And this little girl comes out who's wearing a yellow gown with white frilly lace around it. She says, hi, I'm Zeta. Hi, I'm Flo. Hi, I'm Sammy. I'm Gongo. Are you guys detectives? Yeah, for sure. I don't know. Can you figure out if we are? Do you have magnifying glasses? No. Do you have... We have beer glasses. Wait, I think I have that on my character sheet. I don't see it. Never mind. Do you guys have those hats that are plaid? No. Do you? Do you have notebooks? Yes. Yes. Do yes. you have a pipe? No. Yes. No. Are you sure you guys are detectives? Maybe we should try to find a real detective. Let's do that together. Like, um... Inspector Tragic. That's <laughs> what happens when the gadgets malfunction. <laughs> <laughs> After Penny dies, it goes downhill. When his headcopter malfunctioned and <laughs> took out all the onlookers. Or Cleric Brown. Sherlock Gnome. Hey, uh, we gotta be careful. Nancy That's... Druid. Sherlock Gnome is a, is a movie that's not very good. What is Oh, is that true? Yeah, it's for, it's for children. I mean, it's a, good, it's a great movie. If you're listening and you wrote it. Hey there, groupies. Uh, just wanted to let you know that you should check out our website. It has links to all things that we do, like band camp and our Patreon. And I'm sure there are other things on there, too. Oh, yeah, fan art. So anyway, uh, if you are a patron, $5 or more a month. Or if you're not, you can still get in on that deal. Whenever an album drops, if you're a patron, you get a code to download it from Bandcamp for free. 
um, we email those to you. And we just hope that everybody's out there staying safe and healthy and having fun listening to D&D podcasts. Bye! Well, while you guys are all discussing this, um, I turn around away from Zeta and I light my lantern of revealing and hold it out behind me when I turn back around so that, you know, I can just see things, but that sh- hopefully she doesn't notice that I have it. You have eyes in the back of your head? No. How many? You're shining the lantern behind you. So I, I turned around and I lit my lantern of revealing and then I hid it behind my back as I turned around and let it peek out just a little bit so it would reveal things, but hopefully she wouldn't oh, notice it. So it's behind you, but it's pointing in front of you, not mm-hmm. pointing away from you. Yeah. That makes more sense. Did Flo's lantern reveal any invisible things? No. Wait, do you have anything invisible on you? No. No. Because I would say those things. Because that's my running gag for life. Should we engage with this child? Yeah. Hey, Zeta, what do you want to do? Do you want to go to my playroom? Yeah, sure. Let's go. Okay. And then the maid is like, all right, see you later. Bye. Bye, maid. She leaves. She goes to the kitchen. Okay. Where do maids go? All over. They clean the whole house. Yeah, she went somewhere. They organize things. They listen through the walls. They're perverts, all of them. Any maid or butler working in a rich, wealthy mansion is a pervert. They're hiding in the walls, in the secret passages the rich owners of the house don't even know about. All right, this house better have secret passages, and this just better be Clue, and and I'm in. We go in. I follow her to the playroom. I don't know what these chumps are doing. I follow. We follow. There's no playroom in Clue. That doesn't matter. I follow her. Okay. Cautiously. I'm ready to stab her if she turns into some sort of monster. You're not a good babysitter. I am not wow. a good babysitter because I don't trust her. Have you ever seen a horror movie? It's always the child. What? That's, that's only not the true. omen. That's the omen in like it. The exorcist. Chucky. What about those little kids that are like, Red Rum, but come they didn't play kill any- with us. They just they didn't kill anybody. They're horrifying. They didn't kill anybody. Are you talking about the ones in The Shining? Yeah. No one even killed each other in The Shining. No the one even died, who died in The Shining. Except Jack Nicholson's character. Oh, did he die? Oh, he froze to death. Yeah, he freezes to death. He doesn't so even cool. have any victims. Still creepy. I'm ready. I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. What if it's not really a child? Right. I'm saying... We've met things that change into other things, and this could just be a trap. I think that um, I broke Emily permanently for D&D. All right. We follow her up to the playroom. <laughs> All right. So you go into the playroom, and it's, uh, you know, full of toys and stuff. And, like, uh, there's, like, a dollhouse that's, like, four feet tall because it's, like, a mansion, a doll mansion. Wow. And there's this trunk that looks like a treasure chest. Cool. And... A TV. Nice. It's a giant. Their VCR. Flat crystal ball is what it is. It's a scrying panel. What do you want to do first, Zeta? Well, uh, recently, my favorite toy, Fluffy, has gone missing. What? I think he was kidnapped. What does he look like? He's a bunny. What color is his fluff? He's a stuffed. What type of color is his fluff? Like yeah. his guts? Like his. His fur. What color is his fur? His fluffy fur. Oh, he's pink. Ooh. Does he have any other distinguishing features? No, he's got long floppy ears. He is a bunny. That makes sense. Yeah, and he's really happy and he likes to jump. Okay. And what's his name? Fluffy? Fluffy. Where was the last time you saw Fluffy before his disappearance? He was in the playroom. Well, we're there right now. So which part of the playroom? I look around and see if I see Fluffy. Roll an investigation check. 22. Fluffy is nowhere to be found. Is there any rabbit poop laying around? I rolled a 10. No. Not that you find. Does it just look really messy in here? Does it look pretty organized? It's not very messy. So it's also not like full of toys. It seems like she has like... It's a big room. So there are like still a lot of toys. But it's not like... Full. It's like has some in it, so not like super spoiled. Yeah, is this, does she seem it's not spoiled? To the, or it's not to the point seem... of a mess. She doesn't seem spoiled right away. There's mm-hmm. nothing. She doesn't seem like um, bratty in any way that you can tell. Well, I'm gonna ask her. I'm gonna say, Hey Zeta, what activities is Fluffy known to be interested in doing that might take him outside of the playroom? 
Outside of the playroom, not much. Fluffy likes to drink tea and... Eat his own poop. He likes to um, fly. And eat his own poop. And uh, he casts magic. What kind of magic? Um, Friendship magic. Do you ever watch your friend Fluffy eat his own poop? No, he doesn't poop. What? All rabbits eat their own poop once, and they don't eat it the second time. Maybe he ate it before he stopped pooping. Hmm. Okay. Well, where do you think Fluffy might usually drink tea? At the tea table. And she points at this round table that's like a kid's table, so it's like a foot and a half off the ground. Oh, are there comfortable chairs there? They're like those uh, chairs that are just made out of like dowel rods. Yeah, perfect. Sammy sits down. Yeah, they're perfect size for Sammy, so. Is there a tea set on the table? Yeah. Is there water in there, like, so she can pretend, or nothing, or tea? Nothing, because people that use water to pretend for tea are bad people. Okay. I mean, when they're eight, you know. You didn't just pretend with, like, pretend? You, like, made a mess? Yeah, sometimes. Your mom was like, yeah, take this bucket of water to your room. I hope that it doesn't ruin everything we own. That happened in your family? (laughs) There's a bathroom upstairs. You just go to the bathroom and you fill the teapot. All right. Are you agreeing with me, Grandador, or did you not play with a tea set when you were a kid? I didn't play with tea sets, but, you know. No, you just pretend. You have, like, a cup. You, like, pretend to the the dolls that you're having tea time with, but all the real adults or people or children at the table get to drink water. I'm sure Sammy did it with beer when he was growing up. Yeah. Pretending to drink beer, but it's actually water. Staggering around. Sammy and all of his, uh. I need a road beer, he says. Yeah. His parents are like, what did he just say? <laughs> Sammy and his dolls died. go to the bar. Oh, man, you guys, you guys really caught me. Anyway, all right, so you're sitting down at this table to have tea time? I was just sitting down because we walked this whole way. I put my dagger away. Right into her back. No. Um, <laughs> she seems like well, a kid. I, I sheathed my dagger in her heart. She narrowly escaped the fate of uh, Fordring, whatever that guy's name was. What's the doppelganger's name? Oh, yeah. Listen, I had more, what's that called? <laughs> Evidence that he was evil and doing evil things at that moment in my life. You gotta watch out for Flo. You don't want her on the jury. The, the problem is that you broke Emily, but you didn't break Flo. And I have to keep reminding myself that, like, Flo would just be friends with this girl. She would yes. be so excited to, like, help a person. <laughs> yeah, it's called role. But <laughs> I'm broken. Only Emily believes in just random murder. Flo's so, a good person. So, retroactively, Flo did not pull her dagger out, because why would she do that? She would be excited. Only I get to retcon. All right. Can you retcon that? No. Okay, well, Flo put her dagger away. Are you going to skin that child, Flo? Again? Watch out, Xandar, Zandu, Z- Zeta, Theta, Beta. I don't know what your name is, little girl. Kappa but Lambda. Watch, watch out for this flow girl. She, she's real paranoid these days. Are we speaking in code? All right, Zeta, I think it might be time for us to bring in some of the associates of Fluffy and question them about when the last time they saw Fluffy was. Okay, well. How big is Fluffy? Fluffy is like, uh, like a foot and a half. Okay. Plus just, ears. Just making sure. Like a big stuffed animal. Like Care Bear size stuffed animal. Maybe Care Bears are a little bit smaller than that. Care Bears are like a foot and a half yeah. tall. Yeah. So I think like think Care Bear, but like with the ears. Okay. I mean, there had to have Care been Bear one of friends. Yeah, one of the cousins had to have been a bunny, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it probably had like short ears, not big old flop. Just making sure this isn't some kind of Clifford situation. But you know how Care Bears are like packed and kind of stiff, but their legs kind of like do that like... Wobble. Fluffy's more like a big floppy old like rag. Not like a rag doll. It's like a giant a, rabbit. Like Raggedy Ann. Do you think that this is an actual rabbit? This is not an actual rabbit. No. It's a stuffed animal. What? Yeah, I've been looking for a real rabbit this whole time. <laughs> it has pink fur. This girl thinks I'm crazy asking if her stuffed animals <laughs> poop. So I'm not, I'm not going to look for a real rabbit anymore. All right. I think you're about to introduce us to the rest of the tea party. So there are eight chairs around this little round table. Wow. That has like the... Which one does King Arthur sit at? at? Did Sammy sit on one of the creatures to sit down? No, no. They don't all have a creature in them. Oh, okay. But Zeta says, so this is Zeka. She is 
a rag doll. See, she's actually, that's why I don't want to describe Fluffy as a rag doll because uh, Zekka is actually a rag doll Medusa. Like, is it called, is her name Raggedy Ann? Like the, yeah. Yeah. When they're like, all their joints are like sewn into like a, she's a seam. Yeah. And um, she has like thick snakes for her hair because she's a Medusa. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And uh, they're probably green with yellow underbellies. Yep. Real standard looking Medusa. Did Raggedy Ann have buttons for eyes? No. Her eyes are stitched on. And her hair is a yarn that's like pulled through. So these snakes are like. Well, they're not yarn. So she's not quite like Raggedy Ann. It's more like how Raggedy Ann has like arms. She has like four snakes on the head. Because like, you know, like it's like a flat pattern of fabric that you like sew shut and then sew bits. The snakes go like left to right, one, two, three, four. You know, they're not like uh, every direction the way like uh, the yarn hair is. Okay. But she's like, that's Zekka. She's a Medusa. She likes to do crafts and drink tea. Okay. What kind of crafts? Which crafts does she like to do? Good one. Um, she likes sewing, cross stitch, um, latch hook, quilting, uh, embroidery, that kind of stuff. I'm taking all of these notes in my notebook. She's also into like beading and like stuff like that. Like Punching? Beading. No, beading. Like decorating things with beads. I was just checking. Has she ever turned anyone into stone? Oh, yeah. She does it all the time. I don't look at her. Yeah. You shouldn't look at her directly in the eyes because you'll turn to stone. Who did she turn to stone? Um, you know, she turned Zara into a into a stone. But they're, they're fine now. It's okay. They're friends again. Are they still stone, though? No, they're better. Okay. Where's Zara? Oh, Zara's right here. She has this, um, it's like a giant plastic Tarasque action figure. Uh, it's more like 11 inches tall. The legs move and the arms move and it usually stands up on its like hind legs and its tail. But like the legs can spin like 360 degrees around. So you can like turn it upside down and stuff. One of its scales on the back of its neck, if you push it, its mouth opens and closes. Okay. And what does uh, Zara like to do? Zara likes to eat people. Who has Zara eaten so far? Mostly peasants. Okay. Zara wants to be the king of the, all the monsters. The god Zara. Yeah. Is there a Zeus? Zara starts with an X. Yeah, Zeus could start with an X. There's not a Zeus. I mean, in this world. Yeah, but does Zeka start with an X? Yeah, they all do. Yeah. Her name starts with an X, so she named all these creatures to start with an X to be just like her. Except Fluffy. Yeah, Uh, that's true. All right, who's next? Then there's a little box that has like a wind-up knob on it. Then who might we have in here? That's Zill. Oh, I was going to say Zach in a box. You want to do it? Uh Uh-huh. Okay, she hands it to you. I turn the knob. And then after a couple seconds of the music playing, it bursts open. I jump, for sure. There's a Zill that's attached to this spring. And for everyone that doesn't know what a Zill is, I assume Emily already knows what a Zill is. Yeah. Emily, tell it. Why don't you tell us? Oh, a Zill is um, a creepy head with, um, instead of fangs that come down like a vampire, there's like fangs that go up. But it's not like an orc. Right, it's not like tusks, it's fangs. And then instead of hair, it has like boulders all over it. This isn't too far from the truth. And then it has um, two arms, but the arms, instead of having fingers at the end, it has like one is a claw, like a, like a lobster claw. And the other one is like permanently fist holding onto a dagger, but like a wiggly dagger. Like a Chris knife. But it also has two more arms. Oh, yeah. And in those arms, one of them, um, one of them is just a foot for some reason, like like a human foot. It doesn't make any sense. Uh huh. And then the other one is pointy, like a crab leg. How'd I do? Let's just say that's fine. What is that, Zill, actually? Uh, they're all red skin and they're like half, it's not skin, it's like a scaly. Not an exoskeleton? It's like a scaly exoskeleton. They're like half insect, half reptile. Weird. Yep, they're weird. They have, um, what are the little arms on your jaw called? Do you eat with mandibles? Mm-hmm. Oh, that I eat with? 
Yes. Yeah, what are your face arms called? We thought on the podcast was the right time to approach you about this. We think it's weird you have face arms. I don't think it's that weird. It's fine. I accept you for who you are. Thank you. Uh, I thought that was a mustache this whole time. I play it off well. They have four arms. A zill has legs, but this is a zill in a box, so it just has a spring. What does it have for hair? Rocks? No, it just has like a smooth head. It can have rocks, so that's fine. It can be like lumpy protrusions. That you could mistake for rocks. All right, so Zill pops out after that music that we put in there. Yeah, I think he did a pretty good job of just making that thing up. All right, what does Zill like to do? I ask Zeta. Oh, Zill likes to go shopping at the mall and likes to collect weapons. What kinds of weapons? Mostly swords, but also some of those weird, like, three cream double-bladed weapons. Mm. Githka. Githka. All right, so swords and Githka and shopping at the mall. Also, she likes to collect many different kinds of swords, like sabers and falchions or um, cutlasses, cutlasses, rapiers, uh, gladiuses, gladiuses, gladii, claymores, claymores. She likes swords. I tell Zill, I like whisper in Zill's ear, do you want to see... My rapier. And then Zeta says, like, she said, yeah, she wants to see it. And I pull out my chili rapier and I show it to her. Zeta says, Zill think that's really cool. It is pretty cool. She wants to know if she can have it. Um, She can see it and we'll see if we find your your rabbit, if we still want to do the, the thing where I give it to her. We'll see. I'll think about it. Okay. Might as well leave it with her. You never use it. You know what I mean? I sheath it. And I poke Sammy with it just a touch. And this is Xerxes. Hi, Xerxes. Xerxes is a live iguana that's in a cage that's sitting up on the table. Just like being an iguana. Okay. What does Xerxes eat? Bugs. Has Xerxes' tail ever fallen off? No. Oh, if it does, I think it might grow back. Yeah? It's only one way to find out. We should tear it off. Yeah, let's tear off your lizard's tail and see what happens. Okay. No, wait. Hold on. I think it hurts him. Gormax is like, just do it anyway. But it doesn't look like a tail when it grows back. What's it look like? A turd, kind of. Like a different tail. Like, yeah, like a, a different tail. Still a tail. I guess. Do you know why they do that, Zeta? Why? It's so that if they get trapped by a predator who's trying to hunt them, they can get away. That's smart. Yeah. I wonder which one of them decided to do that first. What do you mean, which one of them? All of the iguanas in history. Oh, the smart one. The, good idea. the smartest one. His name was King Guana. If I had a tail, it would fall off when you caught my tail. Would it grow back or would you just be tailless then? Maybe I had a tail and it already fell off. It's possible. Are you a human? Yeah. The likelihood is slim. But it happens. And many kids are never told that they had a tail when they were born. It came out of your belly. It did fall off. That's not a tail. That's an umbilical cord. All right. Um, is there, are there any other suspects at this table? Or people? Xerxes hates candy. All right. It makes him sick. Yep. My dad told me not to feed him candy. Did you do it once? No. Good. Do you think I should try it? Nope. Nope. And this is Hector. What? It starts with an X. It's actually <laughs> Hector. <laughs> All right. Okay. What's Hector? Hector. 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 Uh, he's like an action figure that looks like the town guard from, like, Grand Argetza. Huge city! He has a, uh, halberd and... Wait, a halberd? <laughs> nope, just a halberd. And he has, like, karate chop action when you pull his arm back. He's like, ah! What does Hector like to do? Uh, Hector slays dragons. Oh, no way. Yeah. And he also likes crafting. Same crafts as uh, Medusa? Um, sorry, I mean, Zika? Zeka. Zeka has two C's in it, by the way. I know, I wrote that already. It's like Rebecca. Well, Hector wants to quilt with Zeka, but Zeka doesn't quilt with him because she spends more of her time sewing with Zill. Mm. Oh, Zill likes to sew. Yeah, Zill is into sewing also. Outside of Xerxes, do they all like to do crafts? No. Zara doesn't. Zara's not really into crafting. And what about Hector? He only likes quilting. Mm. Mm. And he's sad because no one will quilt with him. I'll quilt with him. Okay. Do you have a quilting project? Yeah. Where is it? 
There's like this like uh, kids first quilt set over in the corner. It's like a little tiny quilting roll thing. All right. I take Zector to the corner and I sit so I can see what they're doing and talking about. But I start to quilt next to Zector, the town guard with a halberd who slays dragons. Okay. Good idea, Flo. We got to separate these people and see if their stories match. Mm -hmm. How are the stories of the tea party guests sewn together? Once separated, will this close-knit group unravel? Is the gang crafty enough to find Fluffy for Zeta? Find out next time on Bardic Mystery Tour. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Bardic Mystery Tour is recorded at Looking for Group Pittsburgh. Looking for Group Pittsburgh is a land center in the Brookline neighborhood of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. If you're in the area, stop by for games, co-working, or events. Find more information or schedule your next party at lfgpgh.com.